every area that my life could not produce. He does not look at me, but he looks at Jesus. And so for every patchy place of my life, I get the enhancement of the Holy Spirit. I'll preach this thing right now. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to Seek Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lucha Cooney. So today we are talking about Mike Todd yet again. I cannot believe this dude continues to do these crazy sermon illustrations. And yes, we are going to get right into it. But you know what to do, man, if you like content like this. Please consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, sharing the video, ringing the bell for notifications, doing all the stuff that lets YouTube know that you like content like this. But yo, let's just not waste any time. Let's just dive into this craziness right now. This is God's process. Cutting is God's process of eliminating what isn't producing fruit. And it's also his way of expanding what is producing fruit. So if you don't embrace God cutting you, you are not actually getting the best out of what you have. Yeah. And one cut is going to cause you pain. Remember the scripture says, anybody who's not producing fruit, he cuts them off and throws them away. But the people who are producing fruit, he cuts them so that they can have more fruit. What I found out is one cut is full of pain and the other cut is full of promise. What I'm trying to get everybody in this room under the sound of my voice to realize is God in 2024 when you yell by faith more fruit in my marriage, more fruit in my finances, more fruit in my business, more fruit in my family. He says, let me grab my scissors. So as usual, you have the elaborate stage set up and this time we have an actual barber there cutting Mike Todd's hair to illustrate what he's trying to say in his message. And it sounds like he's trying to preach from John chapter 15 and that is the portion where Jesus talks about abiding in him and the father is the vine dresser. Now, on one hand, there is truth to what he's saying as far as there being a pruning process, right? A pruning process that happens to the saints. And, and that is how over time the father grows and establishes us in our walk with him, right? So that is, there's some truth in there. The connection that he makes between, hey, whenever you're trying to do this or do that, God says, where are my scissors at? So basically like God, God's uh, MO is just automatically to uh, bring some, some uh, trials or testing in your life that is going to cause you to grow, right? Like that is not automatically the case. Like we do know that trials and the, the things that we go through in life are an actual uh, mechanism that God uses to grow us. That that's true, but it doesn't mean that every time God is going to do that. It does not mean that every time God is going to do that in order to uh, bless us with finances or bless us with whatever Mike Todd is trying to uh, claim over here. And you notice that the, the things that it's around, right? Like it's it's all stuff that's good for you. Like there's nothing about this, this uh, pruning that he is uh, suggesting that actually speaks of, hey, how about me dying to myself? How about me, me dying to myself, denying myself, taking up my cross and following you? Like there's nothing in what he's saying that even uh, hints of that. It's all things that are to, to benefit the person, the hearer. And it is back to that prosperity type of preaching that talks about things going well for you if you do certain things. And if you're asking God for these things, and it's all about you. And I just want to let you know that our desire for comfort has made us despise his cut. I'm going to say it one more time. You think if God tells you no, you're getting punished. Instead of if God tells you no, he's protecting you. You think if God doesn't allow you to get the position you prayed for, that somehow he hasn't heard your cry. 
but he actually is answering the prayer you didn't know how to form in your lip with your lips by not letting you get into a position that you would be locked into because he knows you're a people pleaser and if you got that position you wouldn't leave there for 15 years and three years from now he's going to open up the actual destiny step that you need so he told you no now to lead you to the place of purpose so you see how this works it's never going to be just blatant nonsense that makes you just automatically recoil and say okay that's not true what these false teachers do is they're going to mix a little bit of truth with their own eisegesis and their own ideas and put it there and just sprinkle all this in there into the message. And then you are now consuming this hodgepodge of garbage. That's how these guys go about their business. And Mike Todd is a master at this. So he talks about the cutting stuff, and then now somehow it's gotten to him having the knowledge that when God is refusing you something, it is simply because he wants you to do something else or do, uh, again, and it's like a promotion, right? It's a promotion. It's not God is refusing you this job because he wants you to go be a missionary, and it's going to be even harder where you're going, right? Like you're not getting that kind of message, which in fact it could very well be God's will for you, right? If you have that heart for missionary work, like it is literally going to be harder for you doing the will of God. But this somehow paints it as though doing God's will, like there's going to be, there's just a little bit of a season of this uh, snipping and all this stuff. And then what comes out of it is only the, only the, the, the flourishing and you enjoying that, right? God can do and will do some of the greatest works within us through those trials. And it may just be that there is a way in which there's a difficulty consider like Paul struggling with the thorn in the flesh. And we can debate what that was, but struggling with a thorn in the flesh and this thing being permanently in his life, like that was permanently in his life. And yet what, what was his response, right? When I am weak, then I am strong. When I'm weak, then I am strong and my, uh, your strength, God's strength is made perfect in his weakness. So there is a sense in where there, there can be God ordained struggling and trials that are never going to go, go away in your life. They're never going to go away. And that is one of the fundamental flaws of any kind of prosperity preaching. Like they do not have a sound theology of suffering. They just don't because everything is, if I proclaim it, if I speak it into existence, if I do this, if I do that, all is going to go well in the end. Somehow God, like you're manipulating God into blessing you. And that is the approach with these guys. And some of y'all are like, what is he doing right now? This is what in the barber world they call enhancements. See, when you get a master barber and they can see what you don't see, they can fill in the holes and the gaps. The areas, y'all be like, dang, Pastor Mike Beard be so nice. That ain't me. That's the grace of God. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying to you. It presents me in a way that my own effort could not present. It gives me the ability to be able to have the appearance of what's not really mine. It kind of sounds like salvation. It kind of sounds like any man that be in Christ, he is a new creation. So when the debt comes up for all the sin that I made, I get the enhancement of Jesus Christ being the one that stands in front of me and fills in every gap, every hole, every area that my hair could not grow, every area that my life could not produce. He does not look at me, but he looks at Jesus. And so for every patchy place of my life, I get the enhancement of the Holy Spirit. I'll preach this thing right now. And some of y'all like, that's fake. That's favor. <laughs> hey, all of us at some time need favor we don't deserve. Need somebody to cover us when we don't actually have the ability to do it ourselves. 
This is yet another silly message from Mike Todd, another silly presentation of this message. As always, there's going to be some truth mixed in with error, some truth mixed in with simply his opinion, some ways in which he's going to draw from whatever activity or illustration that he has to paint the picture that he's trying to paint. But in the end, this is the latest edition of Mike Todd doing something goofy in order to preach God's word according to what he thinks is preaching God's word and his congregation sits and lovingly cheers for what he's doing. Very, very sad, very sad and very disappointing. I wish he would stop doing this. I wish he would just on one Sunday, I would love to see one Sunday where there's no, where they turn off the led screen in the background where he just simply dresses up, stands in front of the podium and just preaches a message. I'd love to see what that looks like. I almost feel like his congregation is so used to all the theatrics that they might fall asleep if he just simply tried to preach the word. And I definitely think if they went to a church where there was expository preaching, they would certainly fall asleep and think that there's something actually wrong happening because there's no illustration and no bright lights and no other stuff going on. So yet again, we see the sad state of affairs in Transformation Church where people are sitting under this teaching that requires props or a reenactment of a haircut or whatever it is in order to get a message taught to them. And at some point, you got to wonder why people would endure these things. I know what the scriptures say, and it is because people have itchy ears and they want their ears te- uh, they want their ears tickled, and it is because they are accumulating people for their own appetites. And so we also look need to look at these congregations that endure this week in after week in and week out when God's word simply preached is so much better for them. And so much more can be said about this whole thing, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. All right. God bless y'all and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.